Okay, so finally, let's add some lights to this thing. So um, let's look at the top view first. <clears throat> uh, the uh, Let me center this so we can see everything here. Okie dokie, so we got our camera here. It's pointing that away to our big honking backdrop. This round circle is the table that's sitting uh, that these three objects are sitting upon. So the typical light rig has three lights involved. Um, a key light, which is the main light, which will be positioned roughly here, typically. Usually the key light is like, kind of, sort of, at a 45 degree angle of the camera. There will be a fill light positioned here, then a backlight um, here, you know, pointing that away. So what I think I'll do is I'll, <clears throat> I'll use a spotlight for my key light, and I'll use area lights for my fill and uh, backlight. Another thing I'll mention, and I'll repeat this as I go on, the key light is the most intense light, um, and the fill and backlights are typically to start off with like 25% of the key light, so they're they're really dim. Okay, and of course every light rig is gonna you're gonna have their own nuances and, and differences and you know so those are just general principles I just uh, told you there. All right, let's go to our perspective view and go up to the drop down menu, and uh, we're gonna choose um, what am I gonna choose here? Target light. I choose a target light. So let's take a look at our top view here. And actually, that came in pretty close to where I wanted it. Remember that the um, the target light, and I explained this in a series of intro videos on lights. The target light will always point to this light dot target object. Light dot target comes in at zero 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 and which works for our scene, but just to be safe, I'm going to take light.target and I'm going to make it a child of the table. So when I choose the light, okay, anywhere I move it, it's going to point to the, um, you know, the or the center of the table, really, or the origin, all right? Um, what do I want to do here? Oh, let's, in the object manager, the light we just brought in, rename it key. You can call it key light if you want to, but there's a light. I'll call it key light, even though there's a light icon right beside it. I know what that is. And uh, let's go to our perspective view. And just to see where we stand here, um, I'm going to go into my render cam view and just make a quick render of this. And it's not going to be anything fancy schmancy. Okay, you know, um, we're getting there. You can see that the light is not picking up the edge of the, the table and so on. We, you know, we'll fix all that stuff. Clicking on the key light, let's go into the, um, the general tab. For now, let's keep the intensity to 100%. We may turn that down. Uh, shadow, we want to like make realistic shadows for our key light. Hit the drop down menu and choose uh, area light. Or, pardon me, area shadow. And again, this is material that I covered in the um, intro to lights videos uh, in another series. And what else? I don't want any visible light. Uh, visible light is, you know, like when you see like a very powerful spotlight, you can see the light shining through the condensation and dust and so on. I don't want that. What else do I want here? Uh, let's go into the details tab. Um, I'm not going to enable fall off yet because I want to show you guys how that works. Okay, um, let's see, I just enabled shadows only, so let me do a quick render here and just see what's happening. And that looks pretty dramatic uh, as far as the direction of the shadows go. The shadows are like very grainy. I, I like this here. I kind of like, this is just pure dumb luck. I, I just, um, the way the shadows are projecting onto this, I like it. However, the cone of light isn't hitting the um, the full table. So let me disable my render cam. What I'll do here with my key light enabled, I can see this cone of light, and I'll pull it uh, outwards. 
so it's illuminating the the rest of the table and that might completely mess up my render I have no idea here we'll look all right um, no not bad now that this isn't we're, we're nowhere near complete here we got a lot of graininess and a lot of stuff we got to deal with this looks kind of cool and dramatic uh, but when we put in the fill light we'll be able to see the rest of this um, one thing I want to show you is the importance of this this fall off uh, so key light and again this is a topic I discussed in the other videos uh, the intro videos on lighting so key light is selected um, go into details tab down here it says fall off it defaults to none hit the drop down menu and choose inverse square which is physically accurate and if we let me go back to my render view and you can kind of see the what I explained in the previous uh, intro videos, the lighting is this cage. It's ending right at the sphere, so it's going to look when I render this. It's going to look kind of weird. Um, no, it's not too bad, but I, I can really improve this a lot. So let me uh, go back to my view here. The key light is selected. I can grab this. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the. Uh, I'm pulling this cage forward so that the fall off is going to project through all my objects here. And let's see if that makes any difference. It looks like it did already. I can just see just just the hardly any difference. What's what's working out really nice is I'm getting this nice shadow here. I'm getting a reflection of the pyramid here. Shadows are very, very grainy, um, and there's a lot of noise in here, which we can... This material on this tube is looking really, really stupid. Um, so I'm going to change that. I like my sphere. The point is that this... You, you're going to have to do a lot of um, adjustments as we go along. I think I'll say the, the shadows are looking really really grainy uh, and we can address that later but let's put in the other lights first and then we'll address the finer details of the graininess and like maybe change some of these um, materials so they don't look so weird so I'll see you in the next video